Good morning all. Here we're going to test the IGBT gate firing board. Now there's six firing channels, three on the high side and three on the low side. I'm going to test the low side first according to my diagram. And uh, when I get to the house, we'll look at those diagrams. Let's turn on our power supply here. And I'm going to set, let me move this out of the way here. I'm going to set this power supply to plus 12. And I'm picking an arbitrary number. I don't know what the power supply requirements are for that IGBT gate firing board. But I do know from my drawings, I'll set that side to minus 5. So we have plus 12 and minus 5. I do know from my drawings that we have a power supply of plus and minus because of this totem pole right here. Positive on the collector of that NPN transistor and negative on the collector of that PNP transistor. Let's hook ourselves up and see what we get. We're going to use this function generator to drive into the LED side of the optocoupler inputs. There's the output side of the optocoupler hooked up. Let's hook up the input side. Now we're going to need a current limiting resistor. 
because that gate firing board does not have one built in. current limiting resistor for the input LED. It's 120 ohms. Here's pin one, which shall be first test of the firing channel on the low side. Alright, let's connect the input LED of that optocoupler to the function generator. switch the function generator to that firing channel's input optocoupler LED. And you can see here we have a square wave of plus 12 to negative 5. That firing channel is working. Let's get close to the oscilloscope so you can see the waveform. That is a good gate firing waveform. Plus 12 to minus 5 with ground being right here. Now why do we swing minus 5? Why not just go to ground? Well the reason being that for an IGBT we want to ensure that that IGBT is turned off. And so when we go negative, electrons are pulled away from the gate, preventing that IGBT from misfiring, from firing when we don't want it to. Especially if you have a high side, low side firing channel. If you were to turn on two IGBTs at the same time, say for instance, high side U and low side U, we would have, in effect, a short circuit from plus bus to bus ground. Let's test the other firing channels. Let's turn off the power supply. That's supplying plus and minus plus 12 and minus 5 volts DC. And we're going to go to the next low side firing channels. So we will move our clip leads now which input LED do we want to go to looks like pin 3 1 2 3 We are again. That firing channel is working. Let's get, go take a look at its waveform. Let's turn off the power supply again. And we shall move to the last low side. IGBT gate firing channel.
awesome. That waveform looks good too. Now let's hook up to the three high side firing channels. The three low side firing channels worked. Now we're going to connect to the high side. Let's see, pin two this time is positive. 12 volts DC. Pin four is negative five. Pin three again is the output. But this time, pin one is ground. The high sides, as you will see, are a different circuit. Very similar, but different. Now on pin 3, I'm going to connect a 1K resistor from pin 3 output to ground. Let's see, how can I do this? I'm running out of clip leads. I'm going to have to go get some more clip leads. <laughs> okay, let's take this. We'll connect our 1K pull down right there. It's actually a pull negative, pull positive. This. We'll go here. Okay. Now we'll move our input to pin two. Okay, let's connect our oscilloscope to the output. Nice. That high side firing channel looks good too. Let's go look at its waveform. Now if all goes well, and this IGBT gate firing board has not been damaged, so far it looks good, but all of the waveforms that you see on the oscilloscope for the six firing channels should look the same. Just two more to test. Let's turn that power supply off. We'll go to the next high side gate firing channel. These little clip leads, they come in handy. No way I could clip onto those with uh, without those little clip leads. Let's see what we get now. There we go. Another good firing channel. Let's take a look at that one. power down and test the last high side firing channel.
and again. That sixth firing channel looks good. Ain't that pretty? That is nice. So now we'll replace that blown IGBT in that ACM D2 inverter drive. We shall have no fear that this gate, IGBT gate firing board, will work. Awesome. It's always nice to have a little bit of confidence in the things that you're repairing. Sometimes when an IGBT fails, the failure shoots back up through the gate and damages the gate driving circuitry. But in our case, we lucked out. This is a good IGBT gate firing board. Afternoon, oh! Hope you're having a good day. Here we're going to discuss the IGBT gate firing circuitry. Now there's three low side firing channels that look like this right here. And then there's three high side firing channels. And we'll look at that uh, circuit in a little bit. But here we have a TLP 250 optocoupler with an LED input and a digital output that's powered up at pin 8 and ground. Now the output, the digital output, drives into this totem pole circuit right here. We have an NPN transistor on the upper side and a PMP transistor on the lower side. When we did our test, I applied 12 volts DC, a positive 12 volts DC, to this pin 4 right here on the X2 connector. And that applies 12 volts to the collector of the NPN transistor and also 12 volts to pin 8 BCC. Down here I applied a negative 5 volts to pin 2 on this X2 state connector. And that applies a negative 5 volts to the collector of this PMP transistor and negative 5 volts to ground of this TLP250 so that the output at pin 3 would swing positive 12 volts to negative 5 volts. Now I don't know what the power supply requirements of that Burgess ACM-D2 inverter drive are. I don't know what the voltages were out here. Uh, so I arbitrarily picked plus 12 to minus 5. You'll notice the input LED of this optocoupler circuit does not have a current limiting resistor. So I applied a 220 ohm resistor to pin 8 to the function generator. It's positive output. And the ground of the function generator to pin 5 to turn this optocoupler on and off. So when you hook up your IGBT gate firing channel. Don't forget the current limiting resistor right here if your circuit does not have it because if you apply too much current to this 
input LED, it will burn it up. You have to have that current limiting resistor. Now, pin 8 of the X8 connector also went to the six other optocouplers, pin 2. And that's why I applied the 220 ohm resistor right here because it was common to all six optocouplers. When we turn on this input LED and the output would turn on, for instance, let's say pin 6 was high we have a digital high right here that would turn on this transistor right here and the output at pin 3 would go high up to 12 volts when this output on pin 6 was low this transistor turned off and this transistor turned on so that now we had negative 5 volts through the collector emitter junction out to pin 3. So on, we have positive 12 out here. Off, we have negative 5 out here. And our pin 3 would swing from plus 12 to minus 5 based upon square wave input to that optocoupler's LED. Let's go take a look at the high side fire channels. Here are the three circuits for the high side fire channels. Now the power supplies for the high side uh, fire channels, you have to have three separate power supplies to power up the three separate fire channels. You can't tie the grounds together. The high side fire channels have to have separate power supplies. I applied 12 volts DC pin 2, forward bias through this diode, filtered by this capacitor down here on pin 1 of the high side fire channel is ground. And that supplied 12 volts DC to the collector of this NPN transistor and 12 volts DC to VCC of the optocoupler TLP250 on pin 8. Now, reference to pin 1 ground, I applied a negative 5 volts DC out here on pin 4, which applied a negative 5 volts to the collector of this PNP transistor and negative 5 volts on ground pin 5 of the TLP250. Again, we have a totem pole configuration right here so that the output would swing from my supplied 12 volts DC to negative 5 volts DC. Pin 3 would swing up to 12 and down to negative 5 based on the output of the TLP250 driving into these two transistors right here. So that when pin 6 was high, this transistor up here was turned on and we had plus 12 volts DC on pin 3. And when this output was off, this transistor was turned on. And we had negative 5 applied to pin 3. So either this transistor is turned on or this transistor is turned on, not both. 
and we swing from plus 12 to negative 5. Based upon the square wave from the function generator through the 220 ohm current limiting resistor on pin 8 through the anode cathode junction of the LED inside that optocoupler and back to ground of that function generator. Did I miss something? Is that everything? Oh, oh yes. Now for the high side fire channel, I took a one kilo ohm resistor from pin three to ground pin one, and that was our load resistor. And we looked across that resistor and we saw the swing from plus 12 to minus 5. I think that's everything. If not, we'll catch it on the next one. <laughs> All right, all. Have a good night. Have a good night. We'll see you next time. We'll see you in a better day. <laughs>